jogar bem agora, que a bola sobe do baixão. We greet you all with the peace of the Lord Jesus. The church may be seated. We're going to read three verses in three different passages. Revelation and Songs of Solomon. Uh, one phrase. Uh, Songs of Solomon 5.2. Yeah. Now we go into Matthew, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. The sermon, the prophetic sermon of the ten virgins, verse 10. We're going to read just a phrase of this passage as well. The end of it. It's written. And the door closes. In Songs of Solomon, the door is opened. And in the other text, the, sh the door shut. Now we're going to Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Only the beginning of the text. The church can read together. Those whom I love, listen. I stand at the door and knock. Eternal Father, we ask for your blessing in your word, in the meditation of your word. Bless us. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Revelation and also Songs of Solomon that we are studying very hardly, very heavily, it talks about a prophetic moment that the church will live. <coughs> moment in which the church. I think he will, I don't say he will. That the church will leave signs and wonders. And Jesus talks about that. These signs will follow the ones that believe and in my name. So the church that leaves signs and, and wonders. A church that received from the Lord the great love. A church that knows the, their Lord and know their God and knows even by the voice. And it's able to identify the voice of his God in any circumstances. A church that was advised that received the information about the mysteries of God. A church that was adorned, that was formed. You are beautiful, my beloved. Songs of Solomon. It's for the period of the church that we are living now. Jesus said, the world will never see me anymore, but you will see me. 
so jesus stopped preaching to the world and approach his beloved the church in the prophetic moment he starts to talk about the prophetic moment that the church will leave and the the word says that in the determined moment in the chapter 5 of songs of solomon talks about the moment of the night and in the moment of the night the word says that besides they were sleeping the church was awakened by the voice of the beloved the lord and we are living this time a time of awakening it's a time of revival a time that the lord is revealing himself with more intensity among his people this church and interesting that back then when the prophecy was made in the book of songs of solomon the the beloved the the bridegroom approached and knock on the door and he make an appeal and the request at that prophetic moment of the night was that she could open the door for him Sim simple like that if she was if he was inside the house he was he would not be knocking but he knocked because he was outside close to the midnight the beloved jesus is knocking at the door of many many hearts as for many hearts it's leaving jesus behind because of their own projects their own plans outside of their spiritual life and he now is making this call for the one that will benefit by him for the someone that was bought purchased and he paid the high price the relationship between husband and wife in the time of Jesus was different than ours especially in the old testament now a man finds a woman and he engaged and he don't pay anything right but back then it was way different when someone a man was about to engage with uh, with a woman back then there was no the word engagement is not something cultural for the old testament my dog my immaculate my friend my wife and why wife because a praise was paid for that the the marriage contract back then in the days of david and solomon if i was about to get engaged like my wife i decide then i have to go to the parents house and pay a price to her father and then a contract was sealed that i paid and since then she belong to me then i'll come back with my father to prepare the dwelling and after a certain time when my father understood that it was a moment for me to return to her and bring her as a wife then i'll go then it will be consolidating the marriage and back then the wedding lasted about about 7 days seven churches in revelation 
So since that moment, she could not have any any type of relationship with anybody else because she was already committed. And to go straight to the point, let's go to Jesus' time, like Mary and Joseph. Mary was in that situation with Joseph. Before they started living together, it was found that she was pregnant of Jesus. So Joseph had a, a, a commitment. He paid the price. But before the wedding was sealed, she was found pregnant. And she's supposed to live with her, but uh, the wedding, per se, was not done. So the lady, in this case, it was someone that made a commitment. A price was paid. So he goes and when he comes back, so then the woman didn't want him to get inside the house, imagine. Sometimes we say that salvation is free. It's free for us. It's by grace. By grace you saved. And this doesn't come from you. But it's from God. It doesn't come from the good deeds, but by faith. A high price was paid for our lives. So Jesus paid the high price for the church. And here he's talking about talking to his church. Church, open. 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 And when we analyze the chapter 5, we notice that she decided lately to open the door. He was left. My brother. If today you listen to the voice, do not harden your heart. Because the time is now, today, tomorrow, there's a song. Tomorrow can be too late, might be late. And for this uh, bride, tomorrow was too late. She did not open the door for the Savior, for her Lord, for the one that was coming to rescue her, to take her to live eternally. She lost the greatest opportunity. And that's the only opportunity. And when we meditate in the chapter 25 of Matthew, the word says again, 10 women, 10 virgins, in the chapter 24, Jesus starts to talk, and he talks about the beginning of pains, the prophetic sermon, the great tribulation, the second coming of the Son of Man, and then he makes a very strong call to say, watch, because you don't know what time the Lord will come. Be alert as the lightning coming from the east to the west. Be ready your waist with a belt and your lamp opened and lit. 
when we, get, we take the chapter 25, we see the same situation. Wives were awaiting for their bride, groom, and they not prepared. Some were not prepared. And the book of Songs of Solomon, it talks about that preparedness. In Matthew 25, you know what the Bible says, brethren? The door closed. Now she will knock. And she tried as hard as she could, but he couldn't open. She will try. She will call, and he will not open. Imagine that. You're knocking of my Savior, my Lord, and he did not open. You know what he's going to say? I do not know you. If you're here tonight listening, the Bible says whoever has ears heard can hurt can hear it. So the word is being brought to you tonight. So whoever has here listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. If you do not open your life, your heart, the door of your heart for the Lord, the door for his eternity will not be open to you as well. This is the justice of God. Believe in Jesus and you'll be saved. And if you don't believe, you will be you already condemned. Do you want to live here believing to be saved? Or you still live not believing live in this place not believing and being condemned? This is your decision. If God, if it's God's will, no, God wants. God loved the world so much that sent His begotten Son to whoever believed to inherit the, the eternal life. But if you don't believe, you're not going to receive that inheritance. If you believe, you'll be saved. If you don't believe, you were already damned, condemned. If you believe that Jesus died, resurrected, and will come back, you will be saved. And if you don't believe, you are already in damnation. Amen? But there is a song that we sing that says, Still we have time. The seventh church the church of Laodicea, the church of the right of the people. Today, in our days, everybody wants to have their right, right? It's my right, it's my right, it's my right. Even the left is saying, it's my right. It's the church that we live in. It's the church of our days, the Laodicea time. I'm rich. I don't, I don't want anything, even from God. But for this church, the verse 10 says, I rebuke and I bring my judgment. Some are being rebuked by the Lord and being judged and paying the price and that is for love the lord is repre reprehending reprimanding the ones that he loves you are being you, you're feeling reprimanded tonight if you're feeling judged that's because god loves you and we still have time and god is saying directly to you you are the target of this message and now the Lord is saying, Behold, 
I am at the door. Now that you know the destiny of the ones that opened and entered, the ones that are prepared, and the ones that the ones that were not prepared, they didn't enter. They listened, but they didn't open the door. Now you can make the, your choice. You know both sides. You know what happened to one, and you know what happened to the other one. One suffered because they didn't enter, and the other one rejoiced and entered. So there is a passage in the Bible that says, and there is joy in heaven for one sinner that repent. So the heavens wants to have joy tonight. If you, if you, if anyone, if I have repent, the preach, the message for John the Baptist, repent and turn to the Lord. The preaching that Peter did in the Pentecostes, repent yourselves and turn yourselves to the Lord. And the message for all moment is the same, repent and turn to the Lord. It's time to repent. It's time to have our lamps lit with our waist strongly firm and listening to the voice of our Lord. As for our Lord Jesus, will not take longer. He's not saying that he's coming. He's at the door and knocking. And tonight, He's insisting, he's trying his best with your life, with my life. He is at the door, knocking. If someone listen to my voice and open the door, it doesn't matter if you listen to the door only, but you don't take action. Like in the books of uh, Songs of Solomon, the bride listened to the voice, but she didn't open the door. Maybe you have listened to many messages and you have listened many, many times, but you never open the door. It's needed for you to take this, make this decision. If someone listens to my voice and open the door, salvation is act and process. Salvation is a way. I am the way, I am the life, and I am truth. No one will come to the Father but through me. If someone listen to my voice, I will enter in your house. What Jesus wants to say in books, Book of Songs of Solomon, He wanted to enter in the house. Now, in the Laodicea, in the time that we are living, what does Jesus want? He want to enter in your house. He want to enter in my house, in your life, in my life. And He is making this call once again. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in and dine with him. Jesus is a gentleman. He's not going to break the door. He's not going to kick the door. If someone comes from the other side, it's the, the teeth, teeth and whoever is not honest. And one, once I preached that message close to Christmas, and one little kid discerned that whoever comes through the chimney is not Jesus, is not the Savior. So this is the desire of our Lord. If you do that, my brother, my sister, what is the benefit of this decision that you about to take? He going to dine with you. He will dine with you. 
When you take the chapter 23, the Lord is my shepherd, Psalms. And at the end he says, prepares a table before me. And he would like to have the banquet with you. He want to supply your need. You want to be your provider. You want to bring joy to your life. His love is better than wine. Wine is good, but the love of God is better. It overcomes everything. The wine is a joy for this world, but the love of Jesus is a joy for eternal life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I stand at the door and knock. I will come in and dine with him. The Lord want to dine with you tonight. So you can participate to the, uh, on the bread. Remember the supper, the wine and the bread. Church, body of Christ, the Holy Spirit. You want to fulfill your life with peace comfort, joy, bring salvation to your soul. And I'll dine with him. Right there it will be enough. But if you want Jesus for this life only, we are the most miserable. And he don't want us to be miserable. That's why he'll dine with us. He went in your life, he'll bless your life here. And later on, he will be conduct to eternity. And there, you will dine with him in eternal, in, in, in the life eternally with him. So whatever the eyes never saw, the ears never heard, and at the heart of the man never imagined, is the things that God has prepared for the ones that love him. If the banquet with Jesus is good, imagine to have this banquet with him in his eternity I'll dine with him and he with me then talks about our lives in eternity
I invite the church to stand. The Lord showed that a man he listened already that Jesus is the Son of God, born, died, and resurrected, but he don't believe that Jesus will come back. He think it's a So tell her. Tell it tell. But tonight the Lord wants to bring to his heart a fear. It could could put something else, right? But Lord wants to put fear. It could be bringing peace, love, but it doesn't matter if you have peace love but if you don't fear God because the Bible says that fear is the beginning of the wisdom and when the man fear God and he respects and understands God he ended up loving God and when he's conscient that God is talking to him and he understands that it's with him that God is talking to this man needs to put his life straight before God. He needs to straight his life before God. And he's giving you the opportunity of salvation. If you believe, you'll be saved. If you don't believe, we're not going to get together anymore. We're going to a place and you're going to another place. Amen? Is it clear? Fear God and give him glory. God loves you. That's why he revealed your situation of your heart is still have time he's knocking at the door of your heart let Jesus come in amen he wants to change your life do you know that my brother that God wants to bring change your history your fate our time is count to death but a, uh, it's God's will Send his son to change that and give us eternal life. We adore you, Lord, for these moments of fellowship and worship to, with you. And we ask you that your fear can be upon us all the days of our lives. So through this fear, we can be prepared for the glorious second coming of your son, Jesus Christ. So that we prepared our waist firmly attached and our lamps lit, prepared to live with you forever. We bless you for the salvation that there is through the precious blood of Jesus Christ, this high price that was paid for our souls, for this grace abundantly poured out in these last days that we are living. Give us a, a week of blessing of joy, of comforting experiences with the Holy Spirit. Doors can be opened, healings, deliverances, and actions from your Holy Spirit. Take us in peace to our households. We pray in Jesus' name. And in your name we say that the grace of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father and the consolations of the Holy Spirit can be with your people now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. In the March, the month of March, we will have two important events. The seminar of the children. The baptism will happen on the 18th of March and the children's seminar on the 25th. We will have a baptism here in the church Saturday